In this video, I want to talk about arrays in Java. Oh, that's going to be great. But before I do that, because I kind of want to work my way up to it, let's look at an example that does not involve arrays. So here I have a class of students. I have six students in my class, and you can see them named zero, name zero through name five. And then I want to print out my six students' names. So here I have a bunch of print line statements underneath, name zero through name five. And let's say I want to search for a particular student's name. So I'm looking for Sam. So I made a string called search item. And then I'm just going to check to see if search item is equal to name one or name two and so forth. And if I find it, I'm going to print out found name, whatever it is, and the search item. And I can run this and you can see it works beautifully. And that's fine. But let's say instead of six students in my class, I had 10 students or 20 or 30, or let's say I was keeping track of all the students in the school and I had hundreds of students, this begins to become a little impractical. And that's why we're going to look at arrays. So here I have my same six students, except instead of just making a separate variable for each one, I put them into a data structure called an array. And here's how you declare an array. Here's how you make an array. You say what kind of thing the array is going to hold. In this case, my array is going to be of string objects. And then you follow them with these square brackets. This is the open and close square bracket. And this is the names, just a variable name of my array. I'm calling it names because I'm going to put names in it. And arrays are objects. So to make one, you have to use the keyword new. And it is a new array of strings. And then again, I have my square brackets and then I put how many items are going to be in my array. In this case, I have six names. So I said string six. If I wanted to put eight names in my array, I would write an eight. I think you get the idea. So here is my six names. The first name is called names zero. Remember the array of the, the name of my array is called names. The first item is called name zero and then names one and so forth. Now you'll notice that Java and actually most programming languages begin counting with zero. So the first item is item zero. It's the same thing with strings. Of course, the first character in a string is character at position zero. Arrays are no different. But here's the great thing about arrays. If I want to print out all of the names in my array, in this case, I, all I have to do is make a very simple for loop. And here I have a variable X and I'm going from zero to the length of the array names dot length dot length gives me the length of the array. It's a little bit different than saying uh, string length, because if this were a string, I know this is going to be bothersome, but if I wanted the length of a string, you'd have to put the parentheses there. That's because it's a method call, but we won't get into that a whole lot. That's how you get the length of an array. So my for loop is going to go from zero to less than the length of the array. Remember the length of this array is six, but I only want to go up to five because it's numbered zero through five. Very similar when you go through strings. And then here I am printing out name X. So this is going to be zero, one, two, three, or whatever it is, equals names. And I put X in there. So that's going to print out all of the names in my array. Let's say I wanted to search for an item in my array. Also very simple. I have a for loop. And this time in my for loop, I'm just saying if names X, now remember X of course is changing every time I go through the for loop. So if names X equals the thing that I'm searching for, in this case it's Sam, I'm just going to print out, hey, found name X at position X. I'm going to run this real quick and you can see what happens. It's going to work beautifully. Of course, there they are. And it says Sam found at position two. A little funny thing though, and sometimes I think students get this mixed up. X, just to be very clear, X represents the index or the position in my array. The actual item, that would be names X, right? And you can, you've seen similar things with strings. I have an index which represents the position, but the actual items is, is names X. And of course, the beauty of this is if I had a thousand names in my array, I wouldn't even have to change these loops at all. They would work perfectly. What could be better than that? Before we move on, I think it's nice to have a mental picture of what an array looks like. So I drew one. Well, I guess it's not a mental picture. It's an actual picture. So here is my array called names. Remember, arrays are objects. So I drew this as pointing to something. Just like other objects, 
Arrays point to something. It's the address of something, just like if I tell you this is the address of my house, it's not my house, it points to my house. I think we've done this routine before. So this is what names looks like. And underneath, if I said I want to print out names too, well, it's going to print out the item at location two, which is Sam in this case. And that's all there is to it. I just think it's nice to have a mental picture. All right, let's move on. So I just want to point out that in Java, there are several ways to declare an array. I think it's kind of unfortunate actually, but these all mean the same thing. So there's really three different ways I can make this new array. In this case, this is an array of int items and I've named it nums1 and it's a new, because it's a, an object, it's a new int array of five items. And by default, when you declare an int array, Java automatically fills each item in that array with a zero. It initializes it to zero. If it was an array of objects, it would initialize each object to null. But since it's ints, they're zero. I could also create a new array like the second example, slightly different, and I really wish that they wouldn't allow this, but they do. You can have the little square brackets next to the variable name. You don't see it declared this way too often. Usually, you see the array symbol, which is the square brackets, right next to the variable type. So int array is the preferred way. You might see this, but it's not too common. Here, I've just declared an array using two lines. Shouldn't be a big deal. So I have an int array called num3, and num3 is a new int array of five items. There's also a few ways of uh, filling your array with uh, values. So here I created a double array called num4. It's a new double of three items and I can just assign each item in my array by listing them down the page like I did here. So nums4 position 0 is the value 9.7 and so forth. Or you can also fill an array at the time you declare it. So here I've made a double array called nums5 and I filled it with these values just by putting them in these curly brackets, also known as braces. Yeah, that's what the curly brackets are really called. Now notice, I didn't say how many items my array was going to contain. You can list as many items as you want. 3.4, that's another, oh, I have 3.4 already, well, whatever. I guess I like it, I don't know why. Anyway, uh, so you can, you can fill your array with items like this, or you can, this is slightly different, <laughs> And again, I, you know, I wish Java didn't have all these ways of, of declaring things, but here's another array. And this time I'm, I'm using the new keyword and these curly brackets. You don't see this too often and you don't see this too often, but you know, it shouldn't freak you out if you see it. So of course here, and we talked about this before, here's how you go through your array, array. It's called traversing the array. So here in this case is how I would print out every item in my array or you can do it using a while loop. So you might wanna pause the video at this point for a moment and just look at these two ways of traversing, of going through the array and make sure you get what's going on. The other thing that I would do is I'm going to include this little reference sheet underneath the video. I would print it out. It's sort of a handy way of just reminding yourself how you declare an array, how you initialize it with values and how you traverse the array. And that's it. Pretty short video and as always, thanks so much for watching.